It said it's trying to reconnect. Okay, I think we're live on Facebook. Welcome, beloved. We're going to pray Luke chapter 12, verse 49. And it says, Jesus said, I have come to bring fire on the earth. How I wish it was already kindled. You know, whenever I read that scripture, there's one thing that crossed my mind. And what is it? I always ask, Lord, is there fire burning at the altar of my heart for you? If it is, how hot is that fire? Is there fire burning at the altar of your heart for Jesus? If it is, how hot is that fire? Even your pastors, the church that you attend, is there fire burning even at the pulpit and the altar? And how hot it is? How hot is it? Oh, welcome, beloved. Welcome. So we're going to pray first. We're going to pray for ourselves. Then we'll pray for our churches. Then we'll pray for the city. We'll pray for our state. And we'll pray for these nations. Those of you who connect worldwide, awesome. Pray for wherever your city, your country, where you are. Pray for them. We're going to pray Luke chapter 12, verse 49. Yeah, no problem. That's good. No typing anyway. You know that. So once, once we get into a prayer, no typing. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and pray. Luke chapter 12, verse 49. Jesus said, I have brought fire upon the earth. How I wish it was already kindled. Now you're going to open your mouth, and I'm going to open my mouth, and we're going to raise up a voice, a holy, thunderous voice, and cry out to heaven and say, Oh God, light a fire at the altar of my heart that will burn more passionately and zealously for Jesus. A fire that will burn until Jesus comes. Set me ablaze. Make me, oh God, a burning and shining lamp for Jesus. Set my heart on fire. Light a fire, oh God, at the altar of my heart. A fire that will burn away the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, the spirit of arrogance and pride, gossiping, backbiting, murmuring, complaining. You can't be Christian and you're still struggling with these issues call down the fire of God to begin to light a blaze in your heart that your heart will burn for Jesus let the fire of God begin to burn at the altar of your heart that will burn away the flames of a lost culture open your mouth raise your voice beloved and cry out to God for you want to be a burning and a shining one like John the Baptist the Bible says he was a burning lamp and we enjoy his light for a moment. I want to be a burning inferno for Jesus. So I'm going to pray for myself and I want you to join me and cry and raise your voice wherever you are. Say, oh God, set me ablaze. Light of fire, oh God, the altar of my heart that will burn for you more hotter than the flame of a lost culture. For we live in a culture filled with lust. We live in a world so filled with sin. Light of fire in my heart. Make me a burning and shining one for you, Jesus. I want to burn for you and set me ablaze that the world will come and watch me burn for the King of glory. Can you raise your voice and cry out? You want to be an inferno, a burning ball of fire for Jesus. That even when the devil see you, he see nothing but a ball of fire. And he has to run the opposite direction. Yes. Or even the demons come around you for whatever reason. That fire, what happened? When flies goes around fire, the fire soon consume them, right? Ask the Lord to set you ablaze. Luke chapter 2 verse 49. Welcome, beloved. Luke chapter 2 verse 49. Say, Lord, Jesus said, I have brought fire upon the earth and how i wish it was already kindled you want the fire of god to be kindled in your heart you want that fire that jesus brought upon the earth to be kindled in your heart you want jesus to set you ablaze and make you a burning inferno make you a blazing torch of fire the bible said john the baptist was a burning and a shining lamb and we enjoy his light but for a moment that he even went to the wilderness i always like to use the story of john the baptist why because he went to the wilderness. He lived a desert, a wilderness, like a hermit. He lived a lifestyle secluded from all the distraction and the Facebook and the Twitter and all the technology. He had no one. He had no friends. He was lonely, but he had Jesus, the Father, the Holy Ghost. But it was in the, it was in the wilderness that John the Baptist got a voice that shook his nation. I say it was in the wilderness that God gave him a voice that shook his nation. And it was in the wilderness that his voice drew the crowd. So many Christians in America and other parts of the world that are hungry for crowd, you're hungry for stage, you're hungry for pulpit. No, be hungry for Jesus. Because if you're hungry for Jesus, 
your the voice of your majesty that will thunder through your lips the crowd will come looking for you what are you in the wilderness what are you in your prayer closet what are you in the desert what are you in a remote village in africa it doesn't matter where you are just be hungry for jesus your heart desire must be to please god at all costs don't be hungry for a stage many christians in america we have glamorized a uh, christian and Christianity will have glamorized to be a pastor. So everybody wants to be a pastor. Everybody wants to be the head. Nobody wants to be a servant. And like I said before, a few days ago, I said anything with multiple head is a monster. The church of America is a monster because everybody wants to be pastor or pastor wife. No, hunger for Jesus. Don't be hungry for a stage before men. You have a stage before the father. Utilize that stage you have with the Father, and He will give you stage before kings and queens. Learn to bow down your knees two, three times a day, like Daniel, before the King of Kings. Kings of nations will bow down before you in the name of Jesus. Yes, learn to bow down before kings, the King of Kings. Daniel did it two, three times a day. He bowed his knees. Didn't King Nebuchadnezzar put him in a position of authority? So please, we're going to raise our voice and ask the Lord to burn at that fire in Luke chapter 2, verse 49. Let that fire begin to burn away every taste of carnality that is within your soul. And before you can challenge and pull down the altars of Baal in your soul, in, in your church or in your city, ask the Lord, is there anything within your soul? Is there anything in your life, in your heart that you have made an idol? Ask the Lord to search your heart. Anything within your soul that is ungodly, let that fire of God begin to consume it. You want to have a passion in the heart that is after Jesus and Jesus only. So cry out to the Lord, beloved. Raise your voice and cry and say, oh Lord, set my heart on fire. Make me a blazing torch of fire. Make me a burning and a shining one like John the Baptist. Light of fire at the altar of my heart that will burn for you more hotter than the flames of a lost culture. Remove the taste of carnality and worldliness. I want to serve God at all costs. You must learn to love Jesus, that you want to serve him at all costs. So open your mouth and cry out. Luke chapter 12, verse 49. Ask the Lord to set you ablaze. You want to be a blazing inferno for Jesus in the name of Jesus. And then we're going to pray Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Then we're going to serious warfare first after this. I'm going to read it and then we're going to go ahead and pray. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. It says, oh, Welcome, beloved. I can't see that name, but welcome. Uh, Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 says, Who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he shall be like a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap. He will refine. He will sit as a refiner's and a purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. We're going to pray that prayer and ask the Lord to begin to consume everything in you that is ungodly. They are Christians, but they have attitudes. The Bible called it little foxes. You have attitudes and issues within you. And you can't be born again all these years. You still have issues, attitude, mindset, behavior, even some of your doctrines, some of your traditions and your culture. It's ungodly. Ask the Lord who is a refiner's fire and a launderer's soap to enter into you and be honest and sincere. Don't pretend. You're not perfect. No one, no one is. Ask the Lord to deal with the issues of your heart, your mind, your desires, your appetite, your emotions. If God, you know, I always ask Christians the question, those who like to say they're, uh, they're perfect or they, have, they like to have this self-righteous attitude. I say, if God, welcome, beloved. I say, what if God said that he would take all the, all the thoughts that flashes your mind, all the desires in your heart, right? And he placed it on a billboard or a movie screen for the whole world to see. Who will be the first one with volunteer for God to do that? That tells you, you need to pray that prayer. Yes. All the thoughts that flashes across your mind, the emotions and desires that you harbor in your heart. If God said, can I flash it on the billboard for the whole world to see it? Who will be the first to volunteer for God to do that? Not even your pastor can do that. 
And because of that, you got to pray this Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Let the refiner's fire begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body. That everything that is within you that is ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, let the consuming fire of God begin to consume every behavior and attitude and mindsets and doctrines and teachings that is ungodly. You can't be Christian and you're still harboring bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, pride, jealousy. Oh, bless you. Welcome. You cannot be Christian and you're serving God. You're still harboring bitterness and unforgiveness and pride and jealousy and haughty spirit. And you're full of yourself. Even self-righteous attitude is ungodly. Maybe that's why God has not flowed through some of us the way he's supposed to. Because there's some little foxes. There's some issues. As the refiner's fire to begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Let that consuming fire of God begin to consume everything in you that is ungodly. Whatever part of your behavior, your lifestyle, your attitude, your, your mindset, even your appetite that will not allow God to manifest and flow through you freely. Invite the consuming fire, the refiner's fire to begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body. In the name of Jesus, invite the Lord to begin to wash you with his launderous soap. In between the exegesis of your mind, between the encyclopedia, the layers of your soul, those deposits of toxic emotion, invite the Holy Ghost to begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body. That's what the Bible said to wash your mind, your eye gate, and your ear gate. You can't be Christian and washing pornography, washing some of these programs on TV, some of these housewives. You can't do that. If you don't, you have to stop it. There's a program on TV called Empire. I hear Christian, I never watch it. God is my way. I never watch it. But I hear Christian talking about it. And you're Christian. I said, please. You watching a uh, housewife, you watching empire, you watching pornography, you watching gang banging and shooting and violence and cussing and, 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 and bloodshed. I just ask, have one question to ask you, Christian. What spirit in you find those movies entertaining? That's all I got to say. What spirit in you find it entertaining? Is it Holy Spirit? No. You pollute, you fill your mind with those filthiness. And then you go to bed, you have nightmare. Then you wake up and say, Satan, I bind you. You have no right to bind the devil. You invited him by laying all your eyes on those filthy movies. You need to first repent, ask the Lord to forgive you and clean your house. Now you open your mouth and you pray. You raise your voice and pray. Malachi chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Refine me, God, with your fire. The company you keep. The conversation you talk about, the music you listen to, you listen to these worldly people, Beyonce and them. You know the demons that inspire them to write those songs. And then you Christian, you take your money, you buy the song, you bring it to your house, you listen to it, you dance along. Demons come inside, you say, oh, Satan, I rebuke you. Or you're going here and there and yonder, and you're begging for prayers. You no, know, some of you Christian, the solution and the answer to your prayer is to clean up your life. Honestly, some of you don't even need deliverance. You just need to clean up your life. Go and find out the movies, the video games, the songs that you have brought into your house. Check, get them out. Repent that you brought it in. Get it out. Your problem, most of your problems will be solved. Yes, if you only, you'll be honest. You can't have the Bible in one hand and the wine glass in one hand. Drop one. We are not in a season for compromise. The season that is upon the earth and the nations of the world. Head knowledge of God, you can't, you will not make you to survive. The, the, the veracity and the temperature of your prayer life will be what will sustain you. Yes, not running here to pastor, to bishop, to pope, to pray for you. Learn to pray for yourself. If you are weak and you are a baby Christian, you'll be born five years. Wake up now, beloved. Awaken. Get some spiritual backbone, spiritual authority, divine authority. And take authority over your life and your spiritual atmosphere, your spiritual temperature. Don't be satisfied with your life as it is. Don't be, please. I always tell Christian, I say Jesus paid too high of a price for us to live such a low, spiritual, dead, dull, mundane, boring, meaningless, powerless life. We make Jesus look like a whim. When the Bible called him a man of steel, and the Bible said he's strong and mighty, and he's invincible in battle. And yet look at those people who call themselves Christian. They look like a bunch of wimps. They were messing about, and all they were going, they pray for me here, or pray for me there. I need a word here. Please. Settle with God. Open your mouth and pray. Ask the Lord to begin to refine you. Spirit, soul, and body. That's in Malachi chapter 3 verse 2 and 3. Let the refiner's fire of God begin to refine. Even your appetite. 
Even your appetite, surrender your appetite to God, beloved. Ask the Lord to even put your appetite through his fire. When I say appetite, I mean your physical, natural, and your spiritual appetite. Your natural appetite, what you put in your mouth physically to eat. And also, my thing here is freezing up. I don't know if I should stop it. I'll just let it go. My Facebook is freezing up. But anyway, but your appetite, what you put in your mouth to eat physically, I'm guilty of that. Some of us put on so much weight because... You said this is the temple of God. I should start treating it like a temple of God and stop eating junk. Yes, it's not because you don't fornicate. You're still sinning. You're polluting the, the temple of God by feeding it junk and you don't exercise. And I'm guilty of that. That's two. Number one. Number two, what other appetite? The things you feed your spirit and you feed your mind and you feed your eyes and you feed your soul ways. Those are appetite. Movies, music, friendship, relationship, uh, uh, songs, the company you keep. Christian be listening to dirty jokes. And you laugh, you can say, Oh, I didn't tell the joke, but I laugh. But you you in you in um agreements whether you agree with it, you condone it. So you, you may not have to tell the joke, but you laugh, so you find it amusing. Those are part of your appetite. Surrender your appetite, your desire, your emotions. Surrender it to the Holy Ghost. Surrender it to the refiner's fire. And let him begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body. That even the very thought of your mind, that Satan can no longer mess with your mind. That your mind can become a tablet for God to write mysteries about. That your mind and your heart can become a tablet for God to write his mysteries, his wisdom, his revelation. Please, beloved, ask the the Holy Ghost to refine you spirit soul and body and let him begin to wash you from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet your inner man to your outer man let him begin to wash you with his longerous soap that the very appetite that you have for worldliness let the lord deliver you from it let the refiner's fire begin to refine you even from your worldly appetite your worldly taste music company movies christian don't be watching this program Please, I beg of you, stop this. You're bringing demons into your house. You're bringing demons into your life, into your body to mess with you. Stop it. Repent. Get those movies. Get those music. Get those video games. Get it out. You got some friendship and relationship that will cause you to sin. Separate yourself. Is it not better to cut it? What the Bible says, if, if your right arm offend you, cut it off. Cut some people off. In the name of Jesus, ask the Lord to begin to refine you and purge you, spirit, soul, and body, your inner man, your outer man. Christians should not be born again. You're harboring anger and bitterness and strife and jealousy, haughty spirit, unforgiving spirit, competitive spirit. It's all ungodly. Repent of it and ask Holy Spirit to send his fire, his refiner's fire, and begin to refine you right now. Even some stubborn, lazy, disobedient, complacent, compromised, lethargic. Ask the Lord to begin to deal with the issues of your heart and deal with your life. Ask him to pour out his refiner's fire and begin to refine you, spirit, soul, and body. Let the Lord begin to wash you in his longerous soul. That when he's done with you, you look like Jesus. Can I get an amen? That when he's done with you, you are the image of Christ. You are a manifestation of God in bodily form. That when he's done with you, you are God in the flesh. That is the purpose of salvation. It's not to just get born again and you get a house and a husband and a car and a job and you're satisfied. No, that's just the entrance into the kingdom. The purpose of being born again is for you to manifest God in the flesh, period. Adam manifested God in the flesh before sin was found in him. Yes, you and I, Jesus manifested. You and I were meant to manifest God in the flesh. That's why Adam and Jesus, they had no prayer request. Christian, they have a long list of prayer requests. They go to God. All day, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. I want all you can give me. In Jesus' name, amen. That sums up many Christian prayer life. But if you're a manifestation of God in the flesh, you will have the answer. Because Jesus manifested God in the flesh, he knew where to find money to pay his taxes. Hello? Because Jesus manifested God in the flesh, he knew how to feed the multitude in the desert. Hello? Can I get a hello and an amen? Yes, Jesus manifested God in the flesh. So therefore he had an answer. Whenever a problem or a situation arise, he had an answer. He had a solution because he had access to the realm where all the answer lies. He knew how to tap that realm and bring the answer down. So born again is not about I get born again, I go to church on Wednesday and Saturday or whatever. 
and get husband and get children and i'm comfortable and i'm not saying those are bad things those are wonderful things but don't settle there beloved there's more to christendom there's more to salvation than that become god in the flesh there will be no problem that you cannot solve was there any problem that jesus couldn't solve was there a problem that presented itself to Christ that he didn't have the answer? No. Why? He was God in the flesh. What about you? What about me? Today, open your mouth and pray. Let the Lord begin to refine you and purge you and wash you with his longer soap, with his refiner's fire. That when the Lord is done, and welcome, beloved, when the Lord is done, you will look like God in the flesh. Yes. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to pray for myself and you pray for yourself. That the Lord will begin to refine me. Father, search my mind and search my heart. Anything within me, my lifestyle, my behavior, my attitude, that is ungodly, unrighteous, unholy, begin to purge me. Wash me, God, with your launderous soap. Refine me, spirit, soul, and body. That when you're done with me, God, I manifest you to the world in bodily form. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Bless you, beloved. Bless you. Bless you. Now we're going to pray. That same prayer we pray. We're going to pray for the churches. Yes, you would mention whatever church you go to. You mention your church name. You mention your pastor name. You mention, and then we're going to pray for the churches in our city, in our state. And those of you on Facebook, welcome, beloved. I'm doing Facebook and Periscope, so I'm looking like that. So that's why I'm looking to my right and my left, if you're wondering why. Yes. And those of you on Facebook, whatever country you are from the world, or people on Periscope too from the world, Pray for your country. Pray for the churches in your country and your city. And what are we going to pray? The first prayer we pray was what? I want to see if you guys were paying attention. The first scriptures we pray, what was it? Oh, Karen, welcome. Oh, you're not on Periscope? Karen is on, on Facebook. Awesome. Yes. Okay, the first scriptures we pray was Luke chapter 12, verse 49. Welcome, Sharon. We pray Luke chapter 12, verse 49. That's the first scriptures we pray. And they said, Jesus said, I have brought fire upon the earth. Oh, how I wish it was already kindled. We're going to ask the Lord to light a fire in the churches of my city and my state. And you mentioned your church name. Welcome, my Norman. You mentioned your church name, your pastor, the pastor wife. You want your pastor, your pastor wife, you want them to be ablaze. You want the Lord to light a fire in the heart that it will burn for Jesus. That tomorrow's message will not be your ordinary message. Let that Luke chapter 12 verse 49 say, I have brought fire upon the earth. Oh, how I wish it was already kindled. Let the Lord begin to light a fire in the heart of every Christian in my city and my state. In the name of Jesus, starting with my pastor in the church that I go to. Let the altar of the heart begin to ablaze with righteousness and reverential fear for the holy God of Israel. In the name of Jesus, raise your voice, shout to the heavens and cry out, beloved. Because the Bible said this, this body here, this is the temple of God. So if this is the temple of God, that means your heart is supposed to be the altar of God. Correct? If your body is the temple of God, your heart is the altar. So there must be fire burning at the altar of your heart. Is there? Is there fire burning at the altar of your pastor's house, uh, heart or his wife's? If, if it is, he, pray for them today. Let the Lord begin to set the churches ablaze with righteousness and reverential fear. As the Lord, he, Jesus said, it, those are not my words. That's Luke chapter 12 verse 49. Let Jesus begin to light a fire in the heart of every Christian in my city, in my state, in my nation, even including with my pastor, all the Christians in my church. Let the Lord begin to set fire in their heart that it will become a burning inferno for Jesus. They will not, no longer compromise. They will become men and women who are burning on fire, zealous, jealous for Jesus, radical Christian that is, are willing to die for Jesus at all costs. Yes, raise your voice and cry. Let the Lord begin to set every Christian in my city, in my state, in my nation. Let him begin to set them ablaze. Make them a burning inferno in the mighty name of Jesus. Even for my pastor, his wife, the churches, every Christian in my city. Let them become burning inferno. Imagine that every Christian was burning for Jesus. I say imagine if every Christian was set ablaze. I keep asking this question. I say it took Jesus used 12 men and it took him three years to shake the world. I'm sure there's more than 12 Christians in your city, 
in your state, in your country, or in your church? Why is your city not turned upside down? We got to find out. That question is not opposed to judge. All of us need to ask that question. Those are questions I ask myself every day. And I pray about it. I say, Lord, there's more than 12 Christians in my city. Why is my city not saved? Show me the secret. How to turn my city back to you. That's a cry of my heart. What is the cry of your heart? Is it a husband or all you want? Is it a job? Is it children? Those are not bad things. But you, 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 you must learn to desire what God desires. Did he not say when you seek his kingdom, his desire, all those things will come unto you? What is the desperate cry of your heart? There must be, there's more than 12 Christians in your city, in your church. If Jesus used 12 men in three years. He shook the whole world. There's more than 12 Christians in your city. There's more than 12 Christians in your church. And I'm sure you and 12 other Christians in your city have been saved for more than three years. Please tell me, why is your city not saved? It's your fault. It's my fault. It's our fault. But it's time for an awakening. It's time for the cry in the heart of God, people, to wake up and begin to rebel against laziness and compromise and complacency and the dull and mundane and lazy Christian life. It is time for you to... It is time for an awakening and a cry in the heart of God, people, to hunger more and to want more from God. So you raise your voice and you cry and say, Oh God, in the name of Jesus, begin to set the heart of your people ablaze. Begin Begin to set the heart of your people ablaze. Let them be set ablaze with righteousness. Let the altar of the heart of every Christian in my city, let it begin to be set ablaze with righteousness and reverential fear for the Holy God of Israel. Let the pulpit of every church in my city, let it begin to ablaze with righteousness. Let the Lord cause an awakening in the heart of his people that will awaken a slumbering church. Oh, shari bakora ba ye sata. Ye shandi maora bakora ba ba ye sata. Yari bakora ba yo sete. It's time for an awakening in the heart of God's people. It's time for an awakening in the heart of God's people. It's time for a slumbering church to awaken. It's time for that sleeping giant called the church to arise. Awaken, O oh, slumbering bride, from your slumber. It's time, Isaiah chapter 62, it says that the Lord said, He has posted a watchman upon the walls of this nation. Who are the watchmen? I have posted walls, uh, I have posted watchmen upon your walls, O Jerusalem. They will neither slumber nor sleep day or night. You who call upon the law, give yourself and give God no rest until he establishes you. Isaiah chapter 62. Who are the watchmen that God have posted upon the walls of my nation or your nation? You are. The Christians are the watchmen posted upon the walls. But when the watchman left her post or the watchman went into slumber, the enemy snuck in and passed all manners of laws and will complain and wake right now. Raise your voice and cry out. That a slumbering church must awaken. That the slumbering bride of Christ, she must awaken from her slumber. Sleeping beauty must awaken now. In the name of Jesus, cry out to the Lord. Oh, Father, awaken. Awaken the heart of every believer in my city, in my state, and throughout this nation. Awaken anyone who is called by your name. If they say they are a Christian, or they say it's a house of God, a church of God, every church is in my city and my state. Let there be an awakening in the cry of your people once more. Let the sleeping beauty, this sleeping giant called Christian, called the church, let them begin to awaken once more. In the name of Jesus. Excuse me. Continue to pray, but I need a sip of water. Are you guys still there, beloved? Let me know. Are you still praying? Karen, are you there? Ask the Lord to awaken a hunger in the heart of his people. Let the Christians in my city, in my church, in my nation, let them begin to hunger for God more than a hunger for the things of this world. Let there be a deep hunger, a yearning, and a groaning in your soul that you want God at all costs. It's like, oh God, I want you, I want out. Let the Christians in 